Hello everybody who is watching and welcome to the Tony Sport Newsfeed. In the last videos we made, um, yeah, it was all about body shells. We talked about all the things you uh, can do when you yeah, create and mount a new body shell. But uh, this part is over for now and um, in the next videos we will um, went back a little bit more to the setup things which are affecting uh, yeah, the suspension of the car directly. And um, I thought uh, it would be interesting to talk about shocks, springs, shock oil, shock shaft length, uh, shock oil pack, shock position and all these things. So um, we have uh, yeah, quite some interesting news for you in the next uh, newsfeed videos. Um, today we want um, to get into the shock uh, topic um, and we will talk a little bit about springs and the spring selection. Um, in my opinion, it is important to, to have um, a good range of springs in the box, but not from too many different manufacturers. There are a lot of manufacturers out there and you can buy a lot of great springs, um, but sometimes um, it is hard to, to compare the springs from the different manufacturers because they are not all exactly at the same hardness. I mean, when you buy a, a 2.7 spring from four different manufacturers, they will not all be the same. So. Um, when you are going with uh, spring sets of two different manufacturers, in my opinion, that's the best way to go because then you have um, enough different springs to select from for the setup and you have uh, not too many different manufacturers and you will not uh, end into a setup jungle because sometimes it's really, um, really hard to find the, the right springs and when you have to try four different 2.7 or 2.8 springs um, yeah, it's too much for practice days and too much for race days. So, um, in my opinion, go with one or two manufacturers. Um, when you select the springs, um, I would recommend for the touring cars um, to buy maybe a 2.5 as the softest spring and a 3.0 or 3.2 linear spring um, as the hardest option. Um, when you have the springs in, in this range, you can find a setup on almost every track, on tarmac, on carpet, this will be no problem. And um, you should also have um, some progressive springs in your box, maybe a 2.5 to 2.8 spring, which is really famous. Um, and maybe um, a little bit of harder progressive spring, which goes from 2.8 to 3.0 or something like that. But um, that should be enough. Um, you can think about buying uh, all these springs um, double so that you have uh, two pairs of each spring. Uh, because sometimes when you want to run the same spring in the front and in the rear, it's, uh, it's a pity when you, when you don't have them available in your box. Um, okay, now uh, what, what the springs are doing in the car. I mean, it's, it's very simple. The springs are an um, important part of the suspension package. And um, what you always should keep in mind is that the racetrack you are race on, is it a bumpy track? Is it a smooth track? I mean, when you're racing on a bumpy track, you cannot go with uh, springs which are very, very hard because the car will uh, yeah, jump a little bit uh, around on the track and will uh, lose um, the contact to the, to the racetrack a lot of times and your car will be um, yeah, in a really bad shape setup-wise. Um, but overall, you can say um, when you use the different springs, um, when you go with softer springs out on the racetrack with springs like maybe 2.5, 2.6, um, your car will feel uh, very smooth in the first moments, in the initial moments of the steering and the braking and um, you will have a car which will uh, roll a lot more than with harder springs. Um, your car will generate a lot of side bite during the corner and in generally the softer springs, they are always good when you're racing in high traction conditions where you don't want the car to traction roll. And another positive aspect of using softer springs um, when you run outdoors in hot conditions, you all often have uh, the problems that your tires are overheating um, to the end of the run. And then uh, the steering will fade away, the rear traction will fade away, and you cannot uh, go as fast as maybe in the first minutes of the run. And um, softer springs, they will uh, be good in these conditions because softer springs, they don't create that much pressure on the tire and on the racetrack and uh, will um, yeah, help to not overheat your race tires. That's another positive aspect of soft shock springs. And um, 
yeah, as I said before, the car will feel a little bit more easy to drive and a little bit more smooth. But sometimes um, when you race on a track where, where you don't have that much of traction, um, you can go a little bit harder with the springs because, as I told you um, right, uh, right now, um, harder springs, they will provide, they will create more pressure on your tires and will push them harder on the ground, which will create a little bit more traction, especially um, initial when you turn in or when you are uh, entering the corner. So harder springs, they will, uh, yeah, they will be harder with the tires as well, but in some conditions when it's not too hot, but when it's a little bit dusty on the track, uh, you can go with harder springs to get more overall traction into your car. Um, it's always a compromise as it is with all the other setup um, options we have on the on today's uh, race cars. Um, but when you play a little bit around, you can uh, feel a lot of differences. Sometimes the lap times, they are not really faster or slower, but the consistency over the whole run will be better with softer springs in some conditions and with harder springs in some conditions. Harder springs, they also will um, give you the feeling of a, a more aggressive car. The car will not roll that much. It will turn in harder and um, it's a little bit the same effect as when you go um, with the shocks a little bit more straight out on the shock tower. And the same is with softer springs. They will soften the shock package the same way as when you go in with the shocks on the shock tower a little bit. But um, about the shock positions and the shock oils, we will talk in the next video. So uh, for today, that's all I want to tell you about the shock springs. It's um, not an easy topic, but um, when you have a good selection of springs in your box, you can try a little bit and play a little bit around and you will uh, quickly um, notice which springs you like the most. And um, the most of the drivers um, who are practicing a lot and who are racing a lot, they only have their two or three pairs of uh, favorite springs, which they use because they know what they will do with the car and what they will do with the feeling on the racetrack. So you don't have to test uh, five, six, seven or eight pairs of springs at a race day when you have um, some knowledge from your own practicing. So that's my recommendation. Go with some uh, good springs from good manufacturers, buy um, a range and only mix the springs of maybe two manufacturers. That should be enough for you. Check it out at the Tony Spot store. We have a lot of springs available. You can choose from your um, most liked uh, manufacturer then and it's no problem. So yeah, enjoy the racing. And as I said before, wait for the next videos. We will post them in a couple of days where you will get more information about the shock oil and the effects on the track. Same with the shock positions. And we also will give you some uh, information about the uh, length of the shock shaft and the pack of the oil, which is above the piston. This is something really interesting, which you can also play um, around with. And um, yeah, watch the next videos. I will be really happy when you join us again. And until then, the Tony Sport team wishes you a great day. Enjoy racing and race with Tony Sport. You will never race alone. Goodbye, guys.